This week we dig into some literature only to find that there are billions of words. Come on, I'm trying here. This and more on episode 142 of Indie Game Riot. Everybody, I am Josh, and uh, I'm here, of course, joined by the Eric Hunter, Eric M. Hunter, if you want to get specific. Uh, but and you Twitter, do. On Twitter is at Eric Hunter, no M. Uh, the M stands see. for marsupial. Yeah. I got a the, pouch. Those of you who have uh, seen this show before, you might notice a little bit something different. Prep, uh, many of you know who was our graphics guy and all-around utility guy, uh, has made a nice new overlay for the two of us since Rev has been gone for a while, ever since his... Uh, PC has died, so you know we've been doing it duo style. Looks nice, thanks, Prep. And uh, of course, like the news things that I fail to put up sometimes will be down there. Uh, and uh, yeah, just a little bit cleaner. We can see our faces nicer. It was so much easier setting up the cameras this time. So he must have sized the windows uh, perfect. Sixteen by nine. There That's how go. it works. Uh, I don't know. OBS doesn't doesn't follow laws of physics i guess i don't know i know that's not physics but if obs did follow laws of physics because if it was like a physical thing i don't know where i'm going with this i'm also sick so i'll just start off with that uh i've been sick the entire month of december and uh, so i'm apologize if you if you hear my nose like just blocking up I, I try not to be too disgusting sucking it back in your face yeah i'm trying not to uh, because it's gross, and uh, but I apologize ahead of time if it happens. And uh, so I was at, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but I was at MAGFest, so I thought I was like, oh, I got over the cold. Uh, like, like, like. Well, you mentioned Friday. it, so we might as well talk about it now. Well, no, because it's news, all right? It's news. I'm just going to mention I was at MAGFest. But then we will have, we already have like a slow news week, so we need sure. something to talk about. Uh, but anyway, I was at MAGFest, and like Friday, so I left Wednesday evening to to meet the guy that I was going with, and uh, hot. It started Thursday, and then Friday it finally was like I think it's out of my system. And the whole time at the weekend I'm dreading because you know the con crud or the uh, whatever it's called plague, whatever you get yeah. from there. <laughs> the plague. <laughs> so did you take any precautions? Were you like consistently washing your hands? Were you wearing gloves? Did no. you have like one of those medical masks no, on? No. I did see a lot of people with the medical masks, and yeah. our neighbor, the neighbor booth, because I was there, uh, thank you for the follow, uh, I was hoping, um, or I was, I was, we had, I was there helping, as well, not hoping, I was there helping uh, a game called Tether, Free Sphere Entertainment, many of you know that I was a voice actor, or I am a voice actor for them, uh, but I also helped them out with some PR stuff. Um, uh, this was after we covered them on the show, so that's obviously conflict of interest at this point. But uh, I was there helping them, and our neighbor booth had Germex. But I felt so bad, you know, just taking their Germex because they were probably using it pretty consistently. Uh, by the way, they while we were there, uh, if you haven't been to MAGFest, MAGFest is like a giant party as opposed to like a lot of other conventions. Uh, if you like packs and stuff like that are huge and it can get crazy, but it's very like corporate. Um, and then there's other conventions that are very industry based. Magfest is just like a rave. Like everyone's drunk high. Like it's just like fucking Woodstock for gamers. Is what it feels like. Weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so of course we had like a pack of water that we left at our booth because uh, uh, it's open 24 seven, but there's like a specific allotted time that we have to be there for. Um, but a lot of people, you know, obviously take their shit home because they don't want to get stolen. But we left some water there figuring, okay, it's just water, whatever. And, of course, drunk people came in the middle of the night. They cleaned up the neighbor's booth. They, like, organized the shit. They put his crayon. Because he had, like, this thing where he could, like, draw pictures. And then he put it up on his booth wall or whatever. Um, and they, like, put his crayons in this plastic cup all nicely. And in the meantime, I guess they were dehydrated as shit because they, they stole every single, like... 
like probably two thirds of the pack of water, like the big pack of water was left nice. was gone by the time we got back the next morning. So, you know, Magfest. Uh, right. Sounds like it. Yeah. Music? Did you hear any music acts? No, because I was busy in the in the indie game area mm. all the uh, the entire weekend. But there is a lot of music there. Uh, yes, music and gaming festival, which is uh, what Magfest is short for. So, uh, but more on that later in news. Of course, we've been gone for a couple of weeks with uh, the holidays, and then that happened with Magfest. So, uh, hope your holidays were good. How, how how have things been for you the past couple of weeks? They've been well. Yeah, I've been. Busy playing video games and the like. Go on. <laughs> uh, I've been playing through the the Mummy Demastered. You what? That? So, um, so the Mummy. You're aware of the movie, yeah. the Mummy. Well, which 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 one are we talking about? So this is the this is based on the shitty remake with Tom Cruise. Okay. Uh, and if you haven't seen the trailer where there's no music, it's just the weird sound and the director screaming in the background, I recommend you YouTubing that right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's the, one of the reasons why I wanted to watch the movie and actually haven't because it's Tom Cruise and it's, it's the mummy. I don't. So. I will say that I don't think the movie is crappy per se. I would just say it's boring. Like it's the mummy mm. shouldn't be boring. So. Go ahead. Anywho. Um, said developer which i will look up now because i meant to look up earlier is this a mod that you're talking about it is not this is a full official game by way forward technologies published way and forward. developed by who wait no, um i know way forward we feel like we you just do about. know way forward um they've done shante have yeah. genie hero yeah they do do some um, uh licensed stuff they were correct. one of those companies that were like arguably not indie because of the licensed stuff but uh, sure whatever, whatever. <laughs> It's a terrible conversation I have with other terrible people. Anyhow, <laughs> so this game, uh, it's one of those things. So Christmas, got to have a game, right? So this is the game that I got. So my brother gave me one of those um, uh, eShop cards for my Nintendo Switch. That was like 20 bucks, and that was my game for Christmas. I always get a game on Christmas, so that was the one I got. Um, this game, it's a Metroidvania 2D pixelated side-scrolling game. Um, you play as a a marine of sorts uh, with a machine gun and it plays much like you would expect a Metroidvania game to play you get upgrades, you level up your character uh, you find more health packs you get better weapons you uncover new areas the problem with this game is that it is probably the gamiest game that I have ever played or I have played in a very long time okay and what I mean by that is um, this game clearly was not a mummy demastered game when it was first being created because the mummy aspects, uh, the tie-ins anyway, feel like uh, a suppository that you shove up your ass. Okay. That is that is the that is the game. That's the, the, the mummy aspects of the game. Awesome. Um, That's a fantastic Christmas game. It's... If, any, if <laughs> everyone could just get a suppository, shove just, up their ass every Christmas... Crick it right uh, up there. Thank you, um, it, it does exactly what you think a game would be. Like, if you didn't know anything about video games and you're like, oh, let me show you this game. This is, you know, let me let me show you how this game plays. It's exactly what you think the game plays. So it's like, you, so you're playing through the game and you see these doors that you can't open because you don't have the right weapon. Or you see a gap in the floor that you can't jump because you know you're going to get an upgrade later that makes you jump farther. Um, <laughs> okay. The, the the enemies consist of jumping crabs. Um, because that's canon. Giant spiders. Sure. Um, jumping brains out of like uh, like the test tube brains. Like so they're, they're like not green. like in mason jars like like they would be in ancient Egypt. Right. They're like Doctor no. Frankenstein brains. Exactly, and they're attacking you. Uh, there's save points, there's spots where you can like uncover more map, again, much like a Metroidvania game would be. Uh, there are some interesting aspects of the game, whereas, uh, so you let's say you die. And in a traditional, well, in, a, in, a, in an RPG fashion, usually in an RPG game, when you die, like you lose all your shit and you gotta start over. 
right. or you have to go back and collect it. Okay. So this does something similar to that, but instead of just dropping all of your uh, your weapons and all of your abilities and upgrades, it transforms him into an AI bot where he's like a zombie of you huh. with all of your shit. So you start off as... So is when it, you die... Is it like a roguelike then? No. Not at all. Because when you die, that the zombie personification of you spawns with all of your stuff. You respawn at the last save point as basically the... the as you were at the very, very, very beginning of the game. And then all you have to do is go back, find that zombie version of you, kill yourself, and okay. then you can collect all your shit again. Yeah. So it kind of raises the stakes a little bit that you don't see much um, or that that way of doing it, you know, um, rather than just dropping it all. It's like you also have to fight back to get it. So you have to fight your way to it, to where your zombie being is and then beat your zombie being. And they're throwing all of the, you know, the, the, the brand new weapons and stuff that you had already collected. And you've just got this pill, you know, little so uh, machine gun. It seems like... <clears throat> seems like it has an interesting challenge mechanic mixed in with a bunch of bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and, and the soundtrack is amazing. Really? Yeah. Um, but I've, I've probably got about 10 to 12 hours in it. I'm about I want to think I want to say I'm about halfway through it and I'm I'm done with this game. Like I'm just done playing it because okay. it, well, me... it, it is that oh here is Oh, do you see the thing that you can't do yet? Okay, we'll give you the key for that later, and then you have to come back and do it, and then you do it. There's no signposting. It's it's not clever. It's not intuitive. It's just okay, like I was gonna say. There, I mean, there are good games that do that. I mean, Banjo Kazooie does that. Uh, oh and yeah, I, and I know you like that game. So, God, I love that game. yeah. Uh, so on a yes or no scale, no numbers or anything like that, would you recommend it? Yes or no? If it's on sale for cheap, yes, because it's available on Steam as well. Okay. So if you can get it super cheap on a Steam, uh, on a Steam sale, yes. But there are much better games out there to play. So is it like when you get a game for Christmas, do they make it a point, whoever's getting it to you, do they make it a point to give you like a shitty B game? or? No, it's usually just... So Did they, did it, they legitimately think it was going to be good? In the past... It's always just been whatever the most popular game was at the time, whatever that the big release was for that year. That's yeah. usually what I get if I haven't gotten it. But so now that I'm Call of Duty every year. Oh Jesus, no, <laughs> no. It's yeah, Call of Duty or Madden or <laughs> no. Um, but in the past couple of years, since obviously I'm older and I can buy my own fucking games, um, it's usually just a gift card. I to, can buy my own fucking games, Mom. God. Uh, it's usually just a gift card to get whatever I want to get. So, okay, all right. Well, actually, for my for Christmas, I'm pretty sure the vast majority of the gifts were game related in some way, whether it be a board game or a video game. Good. It's funny though, because like uh, only two of the like five board games or like tabletop games, I should say, uh, are. are I'm able to play because I don't have enough friends for the rest of them. You know, Welcome I, it's to just my me, life. me and my wife. So the other games I want to play so much, uh, like like Betrayal at House on the Hill, but I don't have enough friends. Yep. So I have it. If anyone wants to play, you ever come find on yourself over. in this area. Uh, Madden of Duty says Doctor Brony. I'm trying to imagine how that would look and play. Uh, it would just be Call of Duty, but simulated. Uh, like fully, like just about stats and yeah. So it'd be a super boring war game, which I'm sure there is a simulated <laughs> actually, war game. You know, I was just like, she doesn't sound that bad to me because I'm yeah. kind of into those games, the manager game. Well, Civilization's a lot like that. Yeah, from well, my recollection, it's been it, so long since it, I played a Civilization game. Not really. <laughs> it's a, anyway, uh, so you know what I think we need? It's been it's been it's been a while, uh, a couple weeks since the last episode, so I think we need a little bit of an Indie News Injection. Are you bored with the same old games? Yeah. Why, then give yourself an Indie News Injection. Thanks, Indie Games. Today on Indie News Injection. How was that? Was that good? Yeah, you, uh, uh, you, you, you continue. What was that? Was that Masterpiece Theater or something? Uh, no, that was a... Um, <laughs> yeah, Masterpiece Theater. Yep, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, so Opus Magnum, 
um, the latest puzzle game from Zach Zach Tron's Barth, which was showcased as a um, starting the riot, or was it? What was it? Well, or, let's not or, get into that. Okay. Either, <laughs> anywho, um, has been barred from GOG, GoodOldGames.com. Um, which the, is insane. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'd like so to. So the point clarification out. from GOG is <laughs> extremely vague. Go ahead. Right? Sure. Okay. Okay. So he doesn't know exactly why his game is not allowed to be on GOG. There, But apparently this is kind of a thing that I just kind of found out from like a week ago that there's lots of games that GOG has passed on. Yes. Without really giving a reason why. Just so it doesn't fit in there. We, we've talked to and we, we gush about this game called Poncho. Um didn't mm-hmm. do well yeah. uh, commercially, but it's a fantastic game. You should all go check it out, Poncho. Um, Poncho is a game uh, that got rejected from them, and you know they don't reject games based on like sales, right? They they reject games based on uh, do they think it fits their their because they're heavily curated. Do they think it fits their they they when they rejected them, they used the word uh, it doesn't fit our niche. Or they something like that, or like your game is too niche. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay, so Poncho is a is an indie 2D plat- puzzle platformer, right? Uh, that uses actually pretty cool parallax scrolling as part of the platforming because you can like change your depth in the game to platform that way. If that makes any sense. If it doesn't, sure. go check out the game. So what about that is not fitting the niche or is too niche for for GOG? Right. And the same thing with o- Opus Magnum is, I mean, I, I think someone said something about it being, uh, like, too mobile. So there was a tweet that um, uh, Barth put out way back in the day that stated, uh, I think it was, like, right as the game was being released or, like, right when it was getting to the point of being released that he even mentioned that it might not be able to be passed on GOG. So he had an inkling that it wasn't going to go. Right. Um, and the his thought was is because it was too mobile-like or too similar to another game that's already on GOG, but wouldn't go into detail about it. Uh-huh. So... So is it... So they, they're looking for... So it's... Too mobile is kind of dumb in this case, I think. Uh, but being too similar to another game, I guess, could kind of make sense if that's really how hardcore they're curating and they just really want that diverse of a of But a have you seen this game? Like, what? I've never seen a yeah, game like this before. I, well, I mean, even if Not it was Not to this similar, magnitude, anyway. Not this in-depth. Even if it was similar to something else that they had, it's just there's a certain point where quality has to trump the you know the fact that there might be a game with similar mechanics you know what i mean right like are they really going to like if they if they're selling dwarf fortress which i'm sure people still love to this day uh are they really going to just not sell you know every single thing that's been inspired by dwarf fortress you know right i see what you're saying i don't understand and I'd reach out to them, but if they're not answering fucking Polygon, I'd be surprised. Yeah, they're not going to talk to us. Yeah. Well, you don't have to say it like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm all right with it. I don't. I'm I don't. That does, that's not that. a personal attack on me. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. They're busy. They got shit going on. I ain't. We ain't Polygon. <laughs> fucking. Thank God. No, I, it's it's a. Um, so I think it speaks to two different sides. Like I am for like heavily curated. Uh, storefronts just because I feel like at the end of the day it's more about the the curator and not the storefront that's important right if that makes any sense um, like if you just don't like the curator you can just simply move to a different curator a curator rather than moving to a different storefront like the indie game right obviously page on steam available now <laughs> there you go uh, actually this is on our that curator page it is. Um, so I am 100% backing GOG in their decision not to, but I feel like, I think it's, I think it's two things. So I feel like 
there should be a little bit more of an explanation, especially for developers, so that they know like what the, to expect when they try to submit their game to be published on GOG, uh-huh. um, rather than just some random legalese I, bullshit. Yeah, I don't understand like why why companies in general just seem to go with lack of transparency over full transparency. So, in my... It never seems to work out in anyone's favor. In my limited experience with when it comes to things like that, not just with games, just in general of corporations and stuff, it's a it's a couple of things. It's either A, it's extremely selfish, and they have very selfish reasons, reasons why they don't want to host it or do a certain thing, and they just don't want to admit that because they don't want to be ousted as being selfish. Or it's so high-tech and unique that they're afraid that somebody might copy it. The only well, I was thinking maybe there's like there it's like illegal, like they're covering their asses. Maybe there's some sort of liability if like oh these are the reasons that we're not accepting your game, and then all of a sudden you know if you're not like super specific with it, or you know there's always some loophole or someone's gonna argue it, and then be like yo you're just trying not to maybe uh, right for whatever you know insert reason here why you're not in, including us that's not on the list. Or, you know, there's some sort of discrimination happening, which I could kind of see that, I guess. But I don't know. It it just seems like it just seems like more transparency would at least quell the anger. I don't know. I mean, this is the this is just the flavor of the week. This is something else will come up. I don't like this flavor. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't like it? You don't like strawberry? Mint chocolate chip. Oh, strawberry. Fucking strawberry. Oh. Get the hell out of here. Man, everybody's really upset. Um, <laughs> if So here's my recommendation. Did, look, by the way, I mentioned earlier that I would forget to put the damn thing up, and there I did. So there's your logo. There you go. Okay, just so everyone's happy. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what I was going to say was if this can teach developers anything, it's the fact that you need to – to host and sell your game on your own website and not through a not just through a storefront so like I'm on his website right now and it's purchase on Steam or purchase on Humble and that's it like if you're not hosting and selling the game on your own I will say that because I've looked into selling games uh, as a storefront just you know just looking into it that it's not as easy as it sounds uh, to sell to sell a digital file because of like the the biggest thing outside of the fact that it's hard to sell uh, digital goods for whatever reason um, unless you have your own custom coding on the site mm. um, it, it's is the fact that there's like the whole refund or you know what if someone if it's no DRM, refunds or if it's DRM free maybe they want to download it again after per- you know things like that right I don't know just uh you know, and then you have to deal with like fucking uh, tech issues, like oh, I could download it the whole year, some wrong just type. You're like, well, I don't fucking know. And then you either give them their money back, or I don't know. This is kind of a pain in the ass when it comes to that. But I, I Try. do see where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, just you know where do I do something just came different. From? Well, you were at Magfest. I was at um, Magfest, Super Magfest to be specific, because uh, recently. Is it Super Magfest? They're calling it that. Yeah, it used to be just Magfest, and then they added a bunch of other Magfests that do different stuff around the country. So now Super Magfest uh, is like the, the main Magfest, which takes place in <laughs> National Harbor, Maryland. So silly. <laughs> uh, uh, it takes place in National Harbor, Maryland, uh, around DC, and uh, it's a really good time. We talked about it earlier. It's like a giant party when it comes to uh, as far as conventions go. Uh, a lot of people say it's their favorite convention that they ever go to. Um, you know, and I've been to it twice. I've been to it on, uh, they don't sell press passes, uh, like most conventions because they, their reasoning for that is that they don't have sponsors. So therefore they need the revenue from the passes. Right. Um, which is okay. Uh, there, that is their prerogative. The other thing, and then this year I went and helped out tether, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, so both times I never really gotten a chance to like wander around during the convention. I could technically go around, uh, like, because the the indie showcase goes from uh, we have to be there from eleven 
between 11 and 12 is set up time and then they start letting public in officially around 12 um, and then it goes until I think 8 so I and MAGFest technically runs until like midnight they have events going on between concerts and panel or yeah panels and things like that uh, but I never really I'm so tired from the day uh, plus I have you know there's other work to do and, and things like that when you're there for an official reason uh, right. So I never really got a chance to check out the other stuff. I, I, I saw one panel the first time I went. It was a Ninja Sex Party panel. Nice. So that was that was about it. How was it? <laughs> was it good? You know what? I, it was a learning experience uh, culturally because I the 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 amount of worship. Oh man, it's that, out of this fucking world that people give to internet personalities is yep. insane. Like I knew, I knew, like there was just like there was a there was there was, they were famous online, and you know they have millions of people that know yeah, them. quote unquote famous. But then, <laughs> but the fucking like they were fucking throwing just throwing presents at them and like yep. ah, screaming like you know I'm surprised they didn't whip their tits out you know what I mean like it just it was a, it was did you crazy. whip your tits out? I did. That was me. Good. Good. I was the only one. Yep. Uh. So, but anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. So, uh, Magfest, I did the one thing I do get a chance to do both times is, um, you know, we take breaks or whatever because it was me and another guy manning the booth uh, to go around and check out other games. And you know, there's the games that are around you that, of course, you check out because they're they're your booth neighbors. Uh, and then there's some games that you catch. And uh, I, I made quite a few connections. I still have yet to email them. I did get some emails from some of them, but like these are all. Like these are all the business cards that I collected. Uh, nice. I got some cool free stuff uh, between like uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's the badge. I got some like pins on there. Uh, Suzanne uh, from TakeThis.org and the 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 woman who was doing uh, the the legal talks during IRX before she got uh, a job uh, with an actual company. Um, she was there with Take This and got me this cool. She, it was a, as a present at the end of the weekend. She got me this cool shield made of rosewood, that's actually made by Wor Wormwood Gaming. If you know them, they made like custom dice boxes and stuff. Oh wow, uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, but yeah, so I thought I figured I would just talk about quickly some of the games, um, give some shout outs that I particularly like. Uh, uh, we should say I don't know if she's watching, but Claire, uh, Claire Barton, who um, was one of the one of the games around us, uh, she just followed us on Twitter. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. I got to look through Mask of Se Mask of Semblance looked really cool, but I didn't actually get a chance to play their game. But if you want to check them out, it looks really nice. Mask of Semblance. I know it's reversed on camera, so I apologize, but. You know, deal with it. The worst. Uh, hopefully a lot of these people will be uh, coming during uh, IRX at some point. So this was really cool. If you're into, like, narrative and, like, text adventures, this guy wrote a game called Knocked. Uh, his name is Andrew, I believe. Yeah, Andrew uh, Schneider, I think. But uh, he, it, it's like full blown novel length type. Like there's like five hundred thousand words or something like that. It's insane. Jesus. Uh, and basically, you, you're like you play as Robin Hood, but you like choose what kind of Robin Hood you're going to be. Is he going to be a dick or is he going to be a hero? You know, female, male, whatever. That like all that sort of stuff that you can choose from. Uh, so it was a pretty cool text adventure. Well done, uh, Entwine. Uh, let's see. Met some like voice actors and. Hopefully, a lot of these people like weren't necessarily devs either. Um, they were like providing services for devs. Uh, Pied Piper Games, Don, he was right next to us. Uh, he made a game called Toronto Graffiti. He came all the way down from Toronto, um, where you uh, play as a dude uh, spray painting billboards and stuff like that uh, to inspire a city. And there's like some basic stealth mechanics to sneak away from like you know security guards and stuff like that. Sure. They also work with uh, I can't think of the sketch. Sketch is the organization. It's like a nonprofit that like brings art uh, 
into the lives of like marginalized teens so he works with people them as well um one that we've talked about before i think when i first went to magfest because there were actually a, a good chunk of games that that were there when i was there the first time uh, chronobit studios makes lunaform and uh i am thinking the right one right I, i'm pretty sure that's it <laughs> Uh, but anyway, Lunaform is like a mobile game. It is also on Steam, but it's, it's just like a puzzle thing where you move hexes around as these colors, uh, asteroids, get shot at you. Uh, you have to f hit the, you have to make them hit the right color uh, hex in order to build a planet, hence the name Lunaform. Uh, JP Games was the dude that was there uh, on the other side of us. Um that made uh, I forget what the game was actually called now but it was a cool it was a really beautiful uh, platformer and I think he it was his first game that he ever showed off I think he made it mm. like the studio this guy uh, Rob Shields he was making this cool like Tron looking game but with his art in it and uh, but the the really cool thing about it was that he he's before he made the game, he's like an illustrator and makes comics, and uh, he also adds augmented reality. So if you download this app and use it with his comics, it like brings the illustrations to life. Like, oh really shit! Cool, really cool stuff. That sounds amazing. I'm proud to say too that I convinced people to actually buy his some of his uh, prints, uh, which I, I I just enjoy doing. It makes me feel good. Uh, she. Trying to think, who else? That's Lunaform. Can't show you that because it has a code, even though I already. Oh, this one was really cool. So there, the first game I actually checked out while I was there was called Fight Night, and apparently it actually had uh, a Kickstarter. I think they asked for like it was like in the teens, like like seventeen thousand or something like that. They ended up getting like close to fifty or something. Mm. Uh, so they blew it out of the water. And it's a really cool mechanic. It's like a, a classic dungeon crawler, uh, you know, like where, like Eye of the Beholder, if you remember that game, where you know you just like one block at a time, you're moving. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, except when you get into uh, when you get into battles with with monsters and enemies, it turns into like this uh, punch out style. Uh, combat. Oh shit! You can like strafe and dodge backwards, uppercut. Wow, this looks go, awesome. Jab combos and stuff like that is really cool. Really yeah. really fun. I actually think they might have won. I know they they gave out awards. Uh, Tether didn't win anything, but I, we didn't really expect to since we were so early in development. But they might have won uh, one or two awards. While we yeah. were. And then uh skipping all of them because it would take forever to talk about a while but then of course talking about another one that we covered the first time we were there uh, Sortec Games makes Pixel Noir which should be coming out soon um, and if you don't remember that it's a uh, really cool uh, RPG uh, now I can't remember I can't remember exactly how it's described but anyway, you should go check it out. Picks on Noir, and uh, you will probably fall in love. Really good OST as well. Um, and before I forget, I didn't, I don't remember which card was his, but uh, there was one other cool one. I think it was called Stage Fright, where uh, it was like a rhythm game where you could use the keyboard, like the ASD and JKL, like as if it was a piano, but you could actually use a piano as a, like a little keyboard as a peripheral um, to control the game. And you had to play this music, um, you know, to, to progress through the metal, the level, like you would, like, as in Guitar Hero kind of thing, except it's a horror game, so if you fuck up, the more, like, fucking creepy and weird shit happens, uh, and of course there's, like, a story as you go through, uh, that's, you know, creepy in its own right, so, it was a really cool mechanic. Cool. Anyway, uh, next time you should come, Eric. Maybe. We'll see. It's not that far away from you. I've never been, so... I mean, it's kind of far away. That's a good, like, what, six, eight-hour drive? Where's it at? Uh, around D.C. Washington? Yeah. D.C. Yeah. Well, so, if I were to drive to Washington, D.C., I could fly there for an hour. Well, that's not too bad. Oh. If you, can drive. Afford, if you can afford a flight. 
Go for it. Well, the draft can't be that bad. Let's see. Directions. It's a two hour. No. What do you think? What Three you think? hour drive for me. Okay. Uh, it is uh, a. Two and a half, I guess, that technically. We'll do high low. What do you want to do? What are you thinking? What? what? How long do you think it'll be? Uh, Six. Six? Eight hours and ah, 35 minutes. That was my second That's guess. with uh, tolls. I take tolls. Which yeah. even that, I can, my, my. It'll probably take you on a PA turnpike for a little bit. So, so yeah, probably. So my, um, my driving is about eight hours. That's about as long as I can drive. And I'm like steady in a whole day. Right. So I could probably push myself to do that. That wouldn't be terrible. Well, with the baby, it might not work out too well. Oh, there was actually a there was actually a, a dev there um, who I guess got in at the last minute, and uh, they had their they they were coming there with their kid like a two year old, right? And they didn't think they had gotten in, and I guess whoever had their booth before had you know fucked off or something. So they were like, okay, you guys get it now because there's like a waiting list uh, for in case that happens. So the entire time they were there had to take care of their two-year-old with with the booth yep uh i will say though that 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 two kudos that two-year-old uh, that can it was a champ i think it was a if i remember correctly it was a girl i don't remember i'm sorry if you're listening <laughs> everything is a blur weird uh, anyway so yeah i highly suggest magfest if you have a game you want to check it out uh submit to magfest when that rolls around again uh they do have other events but like the super magfest and down in National Harbor is the the big one. It takes place in January, uh, of course, uh, which was why we were not here last year. Oh, yeah. Uh, anything else that you want to talk about MAGFest related or otherwise? No. No. Okay, well, uh, in that case, it's time to start the riot. Huh? This week... On uh, starting the riot because I almost forgot where we were at for a second. Steam World Dig Two, uh, Electric Boogaloo, Electric Boogaloo. There is kind of an electric there is thing because no. it's robots. Uh, first, I want to give a shout out to our friend uh, Indie Gamer Chick who actually provided this key to me through uh, a program called Indie Christmas. She often, if you don't remember, she does these things called. Um, or she used to do. Uh, Indies Matter, I think. It was like a little movement where uh, basically she would get these keys from uh, devs with the permission to hand them out and it's just to, to get word of mouth going for games. Same kind of thing, except now she just does it specifically for different like Christmas and Halloween and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks to her for that. Uh, SteamWorld Dig 2 is, uh, of course, the, the uh, sequel to SteamWorld Dig where uh, you play a robot digging in the ground. <gasps> Imagine that. Uh, and you're like steam-operated robots, hence the name Steam World. And it's like this Western scene, too, which is pretty cool. Um, at the end of Steam World Dig 1, spoilers, in case you, 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 you were going to play Steam World Dig 1. Everybody hold your butts. Uh, the, the main robot that you play as goes missing at the end, and uh, one of the side characters, I uh, actually forget her name now, but the... the the main character in Steam World Dig 2 goes looking for you, and that's where this game starts off. She's looking for uh, the character from the first one. Mm. Um, I will say, uh, again, obviously being a sequel is similar mechanics where you are a robot uh, digging through the dirt to, to grab um, gems which allow you to upgrade things and uh, that sort of stuff. And also uh, a little bit like, uh, it's definitely platforming uh, heavy with some small puzzles, um, just figuring out how to get from A to B, that sort of thing. Some switches and pressure plates, that that sort of puzzle. Um, and a little bit of boss battle, uh, which you're seeing on gameplay right now, which is pretty cool as well. And uh, But the biggest difference is that, I mean, the art was beautiful in the first one. It was even crisper, more crisp. Is that I'm not sure which is grammatically correct uh, in this one. And so is the gameplay. Um, because in the first one, my biggest gripe was that some of the puzzles, and this is partly because I'm not good at games, uh, but to be honest, when you make a game, you should still keep idiots in mind, <laughs> uh, and not allow them to get, uh, stuck to the point where they cannot 
progress. Like I would have had to start over uh, in some of the puzzles in the first one. This one, the puzzles and, and the design, the puzzle designs in the first one were still very good outside of that. Um, this one, even better thought out. Uh, they had a few more new mechanics with her, uh, with like these, you get these powers from this like little pixel dude that is fucking evil. He looks cute, but he just wants destruction and to murder everyone. Uh, he's riding around with you for whatever reason. And, uh just I don't know everything just seems much more you can tell they learned from the first one it's basically what I'm trying to get at uh, you mentioned SteamWorld Heist as well same yes. kind of universe with the robots and everything SteamWorld Heist however takes place in space the robot spaceship it is also a um, it's a turn based strategy game where you have like a crew with you and you have to uh position them in certain a little XCOM style but not as like it's not it's 2D based obviously it's it's side scrolling um, you have to position your crew in, in various areas and based on their strengths and weaknesses etc etc and uh, shoot at the other ones like uh, the shooting is a little bit more like uh, tank wars you know if, is that the game I'm thinking of where you just shoot like over mountains and trying to explode them. Yeah. Or, or Worms. Is There's a shitload one. of those games. Yeah, Worms is usually the popular one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like the part of the mechanic too in, in SteamWorld Heist. This yeah. game is not that. It's, it's again, like the first SteamWorld dig where it's platforming and digging and uh, light puzzle solving. So uh, they also add a lot of secrets, fun stuff to discover, uh, Easter eggs, and um, it, it rewards you for exploring, which is always nice. I appreciate that in most games. And once again, they always knock it out of the park with their soundtracks. Uh, one of the few games that I will just straight up listen to the soundtrack, just chilling. Like, I have their stuff on Spotify, and I just listen to it whenever. So, uh, highly suggest that. What do you think of Steam World Day 2 taking a look at the gameplay and what you've seen so far? Looks great. Looks like something right up my alley. So. Is it? It looks you like can't it. micromanage everything because we discussed this. I don't. I don't like. I don't like to do that. Yes, you do. We discussed mm, this. No, I, you want I to don't. micromanage every little thing. Oh, I don't like to. I just have to. <laughs> no, this game. This game looks great. Um, I mean, and it, I think it's available for damn near anything. Uh, Image and Form, by the way, is the uh, uh, development studio. They are very um, accessible. Too. So if you're ever wanting to uh, have a chat with cool indie devs who have been around for a little bit, um, I would highly suggest contacting them. They are pretty busy, uh, but they do make it a point. They don't like ignore people. Uh, you know, if they're busy, they're like, hey, I'm busy, but maybe we can talk on a later date. You know, that sort of thing. Right. Uh, I should still want to get them on the show. We just haven't made been able to make that happen yet. Or maybe they do just like want me to fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if I were them. Wouldn't be the first. Uh, I think they're based in Sweden. Don't I'm know. not mistaken. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this game's available for damn near everything. Nintendo Switch, Steam, PlayStation 4, and Vita. So It'd probably be pretty good on Switch. You should get it for your Switch. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe sure. I will. Uh, also. Maybe I will. What is the price? For the game on for my love Steam, yes, the game. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine. Thank you. I just don't have that open. No. Um. Oh, by the way, that blue thing just tried to get you to kill yourself. I want to point that out? It's a little fucking bastard. Pretty annoying. Uh. All right. Well, I think that's it for SteamWorld Dig Two. Thank you, uh, Image and Form, for allowing me to play your game, and uh, everyone else should play it as well. You know what uh, we should <laughs> peep you know, at, maybe? I was going to say play with, but that got a little too weird. My peep show. Peep show. Please give all your attention to early access. <laughs> This week on Peep Show, we're talking about they are brilliant. 
I few. I would recommend it. Oh, uh, so shut the fuck up. Hold on. There we go. Forgot what? to mute that one. Sorry. I don't know. What? I just don't. <laughs> I just don't want YouTube getting weird if there happen to be like some audio in there. Anyway, yeah. from from the guy whose video this is. She'll just stop you uh, freaking by out. By the way, if anyone ever wonders uh, about the videos there in our play, gameplay videos, we always link to the original video yep. in the description. So don't be a bastard. Anyway, Jeez. Uh, they are billions by Newman Num. Numantian? Numantian Games? Numantian, yeah, Numantian. Numantian Games? Good. Uh, you, <clears throat> it is a city builder. I actually thought you would like this game, but apparently you're like, oh, it's not a real tough strategy because you can it. Um, but anyway, it is a city builder where you can also manage the citizens to perform various jobs. So it's not very like uh, Dwarf Fortress where it's just the AI kind of prioritizing things. Right. Uh, you do assign them jobs uh, to do. And, and you are uh, fighting zombies? Yes, it is a oh, world full of zombies. Uh, in the early game, you know, you just had these like random zombies kind of wandering in that could be pretty easily taken care of by a few guards standing standing mm. post. Uh, there's various buildings that will help you, uh, you know, upgrade obviously. So you're seeing some towers being built that you can put some guards in, and it, the towers expand their their range to, to fire on these zombies that come through. Uh, you're seeing some zombies being shot now. It's just a couple kind of wandering in. As the game goes, you get into these like massive, like uh, what do you call them? Um, like Factorio, huge like maps where you have these just massive civilizations uh, built up. And uh, when they say they are billions, they mean they are fucking billions. And we're talking yeah, you've seen there's the, a lot. If if you've seen the movie World War Z. Uh, and that that's scene. what it is them clawing up the fucking walls yeah yep. and you see that scene where they're just piling on top of each other and getting over the wall that's what this yep. looks like at some point it's terrifying this game I don't know if it's a game that's meant to be beaten necessarily I, I don't know if they have a, a, an end game in plan uh, when they sent me the review code for this they said that right now it is early access obviously um, they said that right now they only have a sandbox mode, which is usually my favorite anyway, but they are planning a campaign, which tells you that there is an end game. But sure. it just seems like the kind of game that the more you build, the harder it's going to get, and eventually, you know, it's going to be a, a, a fight of attrition, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, eventually you're going to get overpowered. And that's even, even in their trailers, that's what it kind of seems like, is just how long can you last until you get fucking overwhelmed by these literally just just piles and piles and piles of zombies and it's pretty cool I have to admit uh, if you if you take a look at the trailer this gameplay actually doesn't it's early gameplay uh, in this particular video uh, so you're not seeing the the massive piles of zombies I highly suggest checking out the website uh, or you know just googling it or whatever yep. and finding the trailer to see exactly what I'm talking about. So they're they're claiming that the, the engine that the game is built on can handle up to 20,000 units in real time. That so, is a crazy high number. So that means that this shit better be optimized very well. Mm. Because, uh, do you remember, what's that game? Uh, real, real, like, some battle simulator or something? Uh, basically, you just have these faceless soldiers and you can just set them up and let, let them go at each other. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, but that like crashed people's like people with monster computers just they had a crash uh, because it was just so taxing. So obviously, graphically, I mean, it, it looks really nice graphically. In my yes. opinion, I like the it's art. Very pretty. Uh, but it's smaller, so I, that probably helps. But then again, there's still a lot of moving parts uh, when you're talking about that. So I wonder how they went about. I wonder how they went about making it efficient enough to to handle all that. Yeah, because the specs aren't that high. Looking at their Steam page, huh? So I wonder. I wonder what, like, to to optimize things. That's essentially cutting corners that the player doesn't need to see or do or hear or whatever, right? So you know, you're just making the the game run more efficiently. So I wonder what it is that they did. But anyway, uh, you can always ask them, I guess. Sure. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, I'm a fan of city city builders in the first place, and I'm also a fan of zombies. I, I I'm still not tired of the zombie 
no, he hasn't got to you yet. It has not. No, I still love zombies. It helps that I was into zombies before zombies were cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's, but I think that's why I'm tired of them. Is because it's like, anytime I try to watch any like new zombie thing, it's like, oh, this is the same thing from ten years ago that I've seen a thousand times already. There are certain things. Where if, if, I mean, it gets. There are certain ways of handling it that are getting cliche. I mean, just the whole, you know. I mean. The Walking Dead gets away with it because it was already popular in the first place right. with the graphic novels, but it's kind of like the Walking Dead, like cliche of "oh, humanity's the real monster," right? You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> so finding a new angle on it's cool. Uh, and I, you know, I mentioned World War Z, bringing up the like massive hordes, like like unbelievable, un- unfathomable hordes. Uh, but you know, obviously, it's it's different in a gameplay perspective because you know you're interacting with it, so. It hasn't been done on this scale, I don't think, in a game. Uh, you know, there's there's horde games. Uh, Left 4 Dead, obviously. You know, you, you fight hordes of zombies, but not fucking 20,000 at a time. Right. So, I don't know. That's just really interesting to me. It mixed with one of my favorite genres of city building. Uh, and and this, the city building this gets massive as well, on top of the zombies. So, and I figured this game would be right up your alley because of your... Your uh, micro need manager. to control everything. Yeah. No, this game looks great. This game looks this. This is my Warcraft too, like, but with zombies. Yeah, I thought I thought uh, Age of Empires, but with the zombies. Yeah, I would totally play this game. So, there are billions Numantian games. Uh, again, I don't have it up on Steam because the Steam is twenty four ninety nine. Never open for me. Twenty four ninety nine. Twenty four ninety nine. Congratulations on making uh, something cool. Early access. Uh, you know what else is cool? Free fun. Free fun! This week on Free Fun, we're talking about a little something something called... This is probably the most popular free game we've ever talked about. And that, and, we, and we recently talked about Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. It's true. Uh, it is called Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, so you're looking at it, and as Eric said, between segments, uh, it looks just like a dating sim, and yes, it does look like a dating sim. That's the worst impression of me I have ever heard. That's the worst impression of me that I ever heard. Oh, just this is terrible. <laughs> uh, by Team Salvato, um, it is massively popular uh, on on Steam right now. I think it has like well over 20,000 positive reviews. It is like overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive. Um, and it is a free game. Uh, it, it, so it starts off, it is basically, you're right, okay, it is a, a dating sim, but it is much, much more than that. Uh, really good story, uh, obviously, if you're into the anime stuff. By the way, I think this is the, one of the first, if not the first, anime uh games that we've covered on the show and part of that I, I i try and open up uh i try and open up to games that i might not play necessarily but i sure. can never really find myself to find an, uh, one of these style games to be like okay we should talk about this mm. so finally here you go on free fun doki doki literature club uh but of course so that like anime style of of art um so I talked about it a little bit earlier. It might have been between segments, but I I find it hard to talk about this in length because I don't want to spoil it. It's kind of like a big thing to not spoil it uh, because if you haven't played it, um, because it's not just a dating sim. There's there's more to it. Uh, I will say that if you're there, okay, well, it's not too much of a secret because it's it's a tag on Steam. It, oh. There's horror aspects to this game. Ooh. Uh, so it gets dark pretty quickly. Scary times? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, the, 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 the Ichio page says it's not suitable for kids. So, yeah, Well, I mean, it's a dating sim, so even if it wasn't horror, well, probably not suitable for kids. But Also true. Uh, I don't think there's any kind of, like, hentai in it necessarily, but it's... it's uh, why, Josh? What is hentai? Oh, hentai. That's when. That's when. Uh, that's like when Jack drew what's her face on the Titanic, like a French girl. 
Right? Nudity. That's hentai. I mean, you draw me like a French girl all the time, so. Well, stop looking like a French girl. That's just a casual Thursday night for me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm trying to like, I don't want to ruin it to go any further. It's uh, free. It is free. The The characters are, are apparently really well fleshed out. They, Even though it's free, they're making, uh, and I'm glad that they're doing this. They're making a ton of money on merch and stuff like that. People are huge fans of these characters and the story and just the whole thing. I'm and there's sure. also a $10 DLC. So if you contribute up to $10, you get um, new DLC. Hot damn. Hot damn. You know, support your devs if you really enjoy this game, if you're into this sort of thing. I kind of want to try it just for the horror aspect of it. I've never uh, I've never actually played a dating sim before. Uh, oh, you should. I just can't bring myself to do it. But the horror the aspect of this, the fact that there's something more promising other than, oh... I've Let me take off my blouse. <laughs> I've developed a re- relationship with this cartoon. Yeah. Um, I almost co- I almost decided to cover Dream Daddy from oh. Game Grumps, but I was like, eh, no. Well, <laughs> oh, about the Game Grumps, man. Yeah, so I don't just know. changed this whole channel up. Well, I mean, hey, if we get the Game Grumps on this show to talk about new games, that'd be pretty cool. No, I'm good. No, you don't like the Game Grumps? It's weird because I have these like. I don't know them personally, but I have these weird um, dreams. I have these weird, like, like uh, you know, like six degrees of Kevin Bacon type thing. Oh, okay. Except yeah. I'm a lot closer than six degrees, more like two degrees from from a lot of like famous YouTubers. So it's like, oh, I, odd. if I wanted to be that guy that was like trying to ride in coattails, you know, and I've thought about it, I was like, I could reach out to this dude, but I don't want to do that. Right. So, alas, here I am. <laughs> anyway, with me. Yeah, with this fucking bum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I highly suggest you go and check out Doki Doki Literature Club, even if you're not into dating sims, because I'm probably going to check it out uh, just simply for the, the darkness that uh, is supposedly involved. There you go. Um, by Team Salvato Free Fun. Uh, you know what else we're going to check out? No. We're going to check out the end of the show, because the oh. end of the show... All right. You know what happens during the end of the show? The show ends yeah. on the other Say the show. goodbyes. Uh, we do have uh, various ways that you can help us out. Uh, here on Twitch, if you're watching live, we do, of course, uh, accept the subscriptions and bits, donations, that sort of stuff. So if you like what we do, you want to help us grow, that's a good way to do it. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash IndieGameRiot. I know that's kind of been up and down recently, so you know I understand if you're not into that. There are plenty of other ways to help, so... Yeah, whatever suits you. Uh, other ways that you can help is by checking us out on Twitter at IGR Podcast, Facebook.com slash IGR Podcast, and of course, uh, emailing us, contact at IndieGameRide.com, and you can send us various uh, games to check out, people to interview, uh, news stories that are related to Indies, all that sort of stuff. We always appreciate it. You know, general comments too. Eric has his own email, Eric at IndieGameRide.com, and he loves, loves dick pics shoot me those dick pics yes uh so uh do you have any uh last words to say uh you want to talk about the uh fireside oh yeah yeah yeah. good good call good call oh man it's almost like i'm a part of this community and trying to contribute things so we are running speak of the devil holly's in the chat vance what what uh so uh indie game riot is starting this month with the Indie Fireside. Uh, think of it as a book club, but for indie games. So every month, uh, we will do a round-robin random selection of a game. We will all play the game, and then at the end of the month, uh, we'll have a sweet uh, discussion about the game on our Discord channel. Um, the first, actually, set of games that we're doing for January is Snail Trek Chapters 1, 2, and 3. I think 4 is coming um, out soon, but I'm not sure if it'll be out in time for the discussion. Correct. Um, all three chapters are ninety nine cents a piece. Um, well, yes. We do try and keep the games that we choose under ten dollars so that they're affordable. But trust me when I say I understand that even then it still can't. Sometimes you can't afford them. Sure. So if for some reason you cannot afford them, please contact uh, one of the mods uh, in the Discord channel, and we'll try and help you out best as, as we can. There you go. Uh, but yeah, so we're obviously, um, you know, it's free to join. Duh. 
Um, but we're also looking for suggestions of games as well. So if you have a, a game that you th- think would be cool to uh, play for Fireside, let us know. And you can actually discuss in the Discord channel throughout the month. But the idea is at the end of the month, the last Friday of the month, so I think it's the 26th of this month, uh, there will be like a, uh, on Discord, it's like Google Hangout, but Discord style, uh, which we will stream to this channel, the Twitch.tv channel, um, you know, to, to have a nice discussion. Uh, I think we're thinking about keeping it around an hour, but, you know, if it goes longer, we're not going to stifle people's people's uh, opinions and thoughts and stuff like that, so... Uh, hopefully it'll be a good discussion. It's led by a new team member, Holly in the chat, Holly Gaborin, uh, aka Vance. Uh, so thanks to him for leading that whole whole shindig. Very cool. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's it. So, so uh, happy New Year. Yes. Yeah, I meant to make that stupid cliche joke. That hey man, it's been like see a year. you next year. Yeah, I didn't see it. I haven't seen it since last year, Eric. Oh man, it's been so long. Oh. Well, anyway, oh, <laughs> uh, say goodbyes. Goodbye, Dulls.